morning and happy Sabbath. I would like to welcome us all to this day's service and even to this week's study. And uh, I would like to uh, uh, tell us to go to our various classes. Uh, for the study from this side, we will be dealing with the online uh, viewers who are watching from different places. And uh, in the next short while before we do an opening prayer, I would like us to disperse to our classes. My name is uh, Samuel Metosela. I'll be standing in to moderate for today, and uh, we can say our names. Uh, Lona Andrew. My name is Leti Owiti. Yes, thank you. And uh, may we move to our various classes, then we can pray. Yes. So, Lona, maybe you pray with us. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed Sabbath day. We thank you for the opportunity you've given us to share your word and to read your word and to find out what you have in store for us. We pray that before we start the lesson classes, that Lord, your presence may be with us. You may send us your spirit to reveal unto us the truths that are in your word. And through your word, Lord, we may live transformed lives. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are studying lesson eight. Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And our key text today is coming from the book of Hebrews chapter is eight, verse six. Uh, Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6 uh, I'll read it says but as it is Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old of the covenant he mediates is better since it is enacted on better promises that is our key text and uh one thing that was coming to my mind, even as I was reading through this week's lesson, uh, I was looking at Jesus as the mediator of the new covenant. We are looking at grace, the grace of God, and the love of God, uh, and even the death of Christ on the cross. And when we look at him as the mediator, he comes in as the ultimate sacrifice for you, and for me. And uh, while I was reading, it says, there's a line that says, by living a perfect life and then by dying in our place, Jesus mediated a new, better covenant between us and God. That by his coming, other than what used to really be there in the olden days where uh, atonement of sin and uh, would be done through killing of animals in the sanctuary to cleanse us of our sins, it was not complete. And uh, why Jesus becomes even a better mediator is because when we look at him, it was a complete sacrifice for humanity to be saved and for humanity to be redeemed back to God. And uh, one thing that was clear to me is that back then you would depend on someone uh, so much, you, get, you would get attached. Naturally, human beings, when we interact with people, you get so attached, and, and this man would eventually die. But when Christ now comes to be the mediator, he takes our sins, and he remains a dependable man to the very end. There's a, a verse I, I like. This truth is explained in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 to 10 which identifies Jesus as having manifested the perfect obedience required by the covenant. And behold, I have come in the scroll 
of the book. It is written of me, I delight to do your will, O oh my God. And if we jump, this describes the morality of obedience that Christ endured even to the death of the cross and even having had the knowledge of redeeming man to himself. I'd like us to see why there is the need of a new covenant and I believe our sister Letty is going to lead us through that particular part. Thank you. <coughs> um, the need of a new covenant. Um, we find that uh, the, the, when we look at the old covenant, the, the Levitical priests are the ones who acted as mediators between God and Israel. And they were the only ones who were allowed to do that responsibility. And uh, when we read uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11 to 9, it tells us why this, why this, this became a, a requirement. It, uh, it says, Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. For he, whom, he of whom these things were spoken belongs to another tribe from which no man has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident in the likeness of Melchizedek. There arises another priest who has come not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. For he testifies, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. For on one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. So this new covenant would draw us closer to Christ because we find that, that the, the issue that was there with the old covenant is that it could not provide perfection. We find that the animal sacrifices that were offered could not, fa could not provide a true and total cleansing from sin or access to God. And, um, and that is why we, we needed uh, a new covenant. But it doesn't mean that, uh, that, that the Lord was not fair to the Israelites, but he was preparing them. He, was, uh, he, he, was, he gave them the old covenant and the, the Levitical ministry, how, 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 the, how the, 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 old, the, the ministry was carried out was to draw them away from the risk of, of being idolatrous idolaters and it was to point them to Jesus Christ so you find that the, that it was uh, it was an an example of what 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 would come to happen and so when this the, when the when the the levitical priests would offer these sacrifices it was to to help the people put their hope and faith in the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world and so it is by faith that that, that we are led to Christ, and uh, Christ is the culmination of the law. We find that even when, we are when, the, when uh, Moses was given the Ten Commandments, this was to provide a perfect standard of righteousness, because it's through the law that we are able to know about our sins. But they do not provide the righteousness. Perfect righteousness only comes from Jesus, and that is why we needed Christ as our substitute. Thank you. Yes, welcome, Elder. Thank you for joining with us today in this study. And uh, we are on uh, the Sunday part where the need of a new covenant is what our sister was leading us through. And there's something that was very clear in that part. The, if you read, uh, it says, the animal sacrifices offered through them could not provide true total cleansing from sin or access to God. Meaning, when Christ now comes in into the picture, he comes to give us a connection with God, which was already lost back then, and reunite us, we humans, back to divinity. That is why when he comes, he takes in our nature as men and uh, moves with us. He's also tempted as we are, which was also in some earlier week's lesson, uh, and, and tells us that, uh, 
through him and by believing in him, we can all be saved. We can all inherit eternity. And when he reconnects us back, not that the law was done away with. The law still stood, only that he came in with new promises, with uh, grace to save you and me. And maybe, Elder, if you could be having something to add on that, we, you could uh, check with us on that. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, basically, when now Jesus comes in as a mediator between us and God, bringing that second, uh, second covenant, it means that there was, I mean, bringing a new covenant, it means there was another covenant, isn't it? And the covenant which was there, uh, it's like it was not sufficient. So Jesus had to come in and now fill in that gap which was remaining. But does not mean, in my humble view, that it was not the right thing to do then. No, by all standards, then, it was just the right thing to do. Only that now later, they realized that there was something more to be done because now there was a gap widening between man and uh, the creator so the new the a new covenant had to be put in place now jesus christ had now to be introduced he had to come in now and bring us the new covenant which now we enjoy today yeah yes thank you elder yes as he has rightly said uh, we are not saying that we are now doing away with the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments still remain as a standard of righteousness, even though it does not save us, and as was uh, legally uh, practiced. But what we are saying is, it is only the blood of Jesus Christ, who is our mediator, that can supply us with the desire and strength to be righteous and keep his law. So all our righteousness come from Jesus Christ. And that is why we need a correct understanding of the new covenant that makes this possible. Thank you for that addition. And uh, just to continue on, if we look at uh, new and renewed, there's a line I would like to pick and we are open to sharing what we could take out of that. There's a line that says, the covenant was not faulty. The people were. In in, what, what do you make of this statement? Uh, uh, what God gives is always perfect. Now, when God gave the first covenant, and uh, it was through sacrifices of uh, animals, blood had to be spilled so that at least that covenant is kept going. But s still, there was something missing which now then made God now to send Jesus Christ to now come and have it complete for us. Yes, and I think uh, something that was very clear is that all the prophecies uh, of that time were pointing to the coming of a Savior who was coming to redeem the world. And even while we looked forward to his coming, when he comes, he comes not to do away with what was existing as law, but rather to reinforce them and even to give us a better understanding of what these laws were and why the covenants had to be renewed. And when Christ comes in, by his coming, these laws were now to be written in our hearts and in our minds and in every thinking organ of our being so that we would connect, we would resonate. Like I was saying earlier, that... Many a times back then, people had placed their hope so much in uh, the priests of that time who were leading them through these processes. And when these men died, there is a way in which they lost hope. But when Christ came, he came to give life and life in abundance. He came to reconnect us back with divinity and to give an assurance because this coming now, salvation was assured and the forgiveness of sin was guaranteed. And this is what we find by the coming of Christ 
and instead God promises to do new things. That is, if you read Jeremiah chapter is 31, verses 22. The covenant will not be like the covenant that God had made with the fathers. Because of the unfaithfulness of the people, the promise that God made under the Mosaic covenants were never fulfilled. Now, in virtue of the guarantee given by his son, God will fulfill the purposes of his covenant. God did not change his law or lower his standards. Instead, he sent his son as a guarantee of the covenant promises. And uh, in order, to, even as we continue with that, uh, I don't know if any of us is having a comment with regards to that particular day. Yeah, and you know, uh, somebody might think that God, God did not have this plan of even a second covenant. In the beginning, God had already put all these plans in place. He knew that there will be the first co uh, covenant, and then thereabout, there would be need for a second or a new covenant between him and man, given the nature of man and being that the devil is also around trying to confuse human beings to do the opposite of what God has always intended us to do. And that's why in the beginning there was a very elaborate plan of both the covenants that for them to understand me better, let me first of all introduce them to this. You see, like weaning a child. When children are born, you start them with milk, then slowly, slowly you introduce them to uji, <laughs> then slowly into ugali and soup, and then finally into eating proper food. So that was God's plan. That Yes, let me introduce them first to the first covenant. Let them do it through uh, sacrifices. Let them understand it. Then now let me bring the final perfect one, which now ties me with them permanently until the end of the, the world. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I would like to pose this question, and uh, this goes to you, Lana. Why is Jesus a better mediator of the covenant? Better mediator. Uh, this took me back when we had the post-election violence. And uh, Kofi Annan came to Kenya as a mediator. So... The role he was trying to do was he was actually, if you look at the role of the mediator, you play a neutral ground and you try and hear both parties if they can be able to come to an agreement. And so, um, why better mediator? Better mediator means that there are actually other mediators, but Jesus is the better mediator. If we, if we look at um, the Old Testament, we find Moses. Moses was a mediator. But you find that Moses actually relied upon God to give him the law. So he will go to Mount Sinai and God will give him the laws on Mount Sinai. But here himself, we find God now who is our mediator, who is the actual lawgiver. And that makes him the better mediator. Another thing is that um, Moses will actually seek a meeting with God. You know, he will request to meet with God and we'll go up to Mount Sinai and have a meeting with God. But right now, uh, we have God, Jesus Christ himself, sitting on the right hand side of the throne. And so we do not need to seek for an appointment or a meeting with him. We can actually approach him when, when need arises. And that makes him a better mediator. Um, if we let us read Hebrews 8, 1 to 6. Hebrews 8, 1 to 6. And it says, The whole point of what I've said is this. Our new high priest is so great that he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty of heaven and earth. He is serving in the true sanctuary, which is in heaven, set up by God and not by man. Even high priest who ministers in the earthly sanctuary is expected to present offerings and sacrifices to God on behalf of his people. So Christ, who is ministering in the heavenly sanctuary, must also have something to offer. 
if Christ was still here on earth, he wouldn't need to be a priest because there are scores of priests who offer gifts prescribed by law. But the work they do here is only an imperfect copy and shadow of what is being done for us in heaven. This is what God had in mind for the services of the earthly sanctuary when he said to Moses, build according to the plan which I showed you on the mountain. Christ's ministry in the heavenly sanctuary is far better than the ministry of priests on earth, just as the covenant of which is the mediator is better than the old Levitical covenant because it is based on promises already fulfilled. So what are we talking about? Whatever was happening before were basically types and shadows. But here, the, the, when the Israelites would go and sacrifice the lamb and offer the blood, that was a shadow of what was to come. And so Christ comes, dies on the cross to fulfill what was being, what was prophesied before as was spoken by, we read from Jeremiah in the Old Testament. And so, uh, another thing also that makes um, this new covenant, uh, having a better mediator, is when you have, like when I was giving the example of Kofi Annan, when you have problems in Africa, you'll expect an African to be a mediator. Yes, you may have someone from the Western coming to, yes, you may have someone from the West coming to mediate, but uh, they may not fully understand the challenges we feel. But here is Jesus Christ who has lived with men on earth, who has been touched by the infirmities, and so that actually makes him also a better mediator. Yes. And, uh, yes. Exactly executed. Uh, you know, for you to be a mediator, you must also understand the problem better, just like she has put it. That an African would understand African problems and challenges much better than somebody coming from abroad. Now, if you look at Jesus in this mix, you realize that in the beginning there was God, and God was with blah, 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 isn't it? Now, Jesus was there at the beginning when the creation was being done. So when all these plans were being made, Jesus really understood, Jesus being uh, God the Son, understood how this program was going to be. So that when now he comes to mediate, he comes from with that background, that at the beginning we had put a plan that now this would happen this time, then this would come after this, then finally this would uh, be executed finally. So that makes him a, a very good mediator because he was there at the beginning when the plans were being done or being made and then now he comes now with that background. Mm. Yes. And uh, just to also uh, add and re echo a point, uh, Jesus is a greater mediator than Moses because he ministers in the heavenly sanctuary. Mm. And uh, there's a line that I loved there that says, Moses' face reflected the glory of God, but Jesus in himself is the glory of God. Yes. Moses spoke with God's face to face, but Jesus is God's word personified. Correct. And... Uh, in, in the comment section, maybe we will also get your comment viewers on what you think about this week's study as we go through Jesus as the mediator of the new covenant. And uh, Elder, I'd like that you take us through the new covenant has better promises. Now, naturally, uh, when something new comes, it means it's a perfection of something which was already there and now uh, elevated to another level. For instance, I want just to be very practical. <laughs> Even uh, when we make cars, you realize that a car that was being used in the, in the 60s was good then. But now a car in this age and time has been modified. Those days we did not have automatic cars. But now, now we have them automatic. So that it's been improved. It's an improvement. So that it's making our lives much better than we were. It's making us know more 
than we did then. And then it draws us much closer to Christ and God himself as the creator than we were then. So that now we don't need somebody in between as we can access the throne direct. Not like before when we used to do it through prophets. Now you can kneel down and pray to God direct through Jesus Christ. And I think that then makes it so perfect for us that there is direct easy access. There is uh, no, no brokers in between here as I would put it in our current world. And uh, it makes us understand God much better than we knew him then. I think in, in a nutshell, that's what I would say about the new covenant. And uh, just to, to read, I don't know whether you can read with us the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 5 to 10. Hebrews? Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, 10 verse 5 to 10. It says, Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do your will, O God. Previously saying, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. By that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Yes, and uh, I, I would like to say that the covenant between God and Israel was ratified with blood. Mm. This blood was sprinkled both over and beneath the altar. The people of Israel promised to obey all that the Lord had spoken. The condition of eternal life is now just what it always has been, just what it is in paradise before the fall of our first parent. Perfect obedience to the law of God, perfect rationalism. If eternal life were granted on any condition short of this, then the happiness of the whole universe would be imperiled. The, the way would have been open for sin with all its strain of who and misery to be immortalized. That is, if we read Steps to Christ, page is 62. And uh, we find that uh, when God now comes, why it is better with Jesus as a mediator and why this new covenant is very important is that now these laws, the laws of God, which back then were read to the people of uh, Israel, today is to be written in our hearts, in our minds, and there's a way we can relate with these laws. There's a way we can connect with Christ, having died, suffered, and died on the cross for you and me. And beloved, the messages in Hebrews about Christ is all messages of hope and messages that gives uh, God's grace. And uh, all that is required of us is to believe. Through looking at Jesus, we are supposed to believe in him that he took our sins and we have been redeemed from this sinful world. I'd like to pose a, a, a question uh, on, the, on the Thursday part. Uh, just before then, I, I don't know if you could be having any comment with regards to the new covenant as a better promises. The new covenant has better promises. Um, what is coming out is that God's promises and uh, rewards did not change, but the way the people understood them changed. After Jesus had dwelt with uh, the people on earth, they were able to better visualize and internalize these promises, and they could see more clearly what God's heavenly kingdom must be like by observing the humble, obedient life of their Savior. 
maybe I can add, well, add as the, there's a question down there. It says that Christ has satisfied the demands of the covenant. Therefore, the fulfillment of God's promises to us is not in doubt. And then, so how does that help us to understand the meaning of Second Corinthians 1, 20, 22? What wonderful hope is found here. So when I went through that, we realized that today we've, we've been given the Holy Spirit that will help us to overcome because we have to be in perfect obedience and the, and the only the only way we can we can get we can attain that perfect obedience that we should have in Christ is by allowing Christ to live through us and that is only possible through the Holy Spirit and so this and this gives us the hope that it is possible through the Holy Spirit yes and then okay. again is that this new this new covenant is coming direct from Jesus Christ. Jesus we know is so perfect. And like the animals which we used to slaughter our sacrifice in the past. So because Jesus himself is divinity, mm -hmm. now it is a perfect, perfect covenant now between us and uh, God himself. Because it is made by, by God himself again. Because God the Son, Jesus Christ. Yes. The new covenant has solved the problem of the heart, and I would like to ask, how has this happened? Uh, sister. The new covenant has solved the problem of the heart. Maybe you can read uh, Matthew 12 uh, from verse 33. Matthew 12 from 33, it says, you need to make up your mind whether my work is from God or not. A good tree bears good fruit and a bad tree bad fruit. If my work is from God, then it is good and he who is doing it must be good too. You can't have it both ways. You are as slippery as snakes. How can you be planning to have me killed at the same time be objective in deciding whether my work is of God or of the devil? The mouth speaks that overflows from the heart. A good man's heart will overflow with good things, and an evil man's heart will overflow with evil things. And so from this book of Matthew, we see that the heart is the seat of intelligence. And the problem here is, when we read about is the problem of the tree. And the fruits that are being born by this tree is actually found in the heart and that is why we need to discuss about the problem of the heart um maybe to pose a question like why do we keep the sabbath do we keep the sabbath so that we can be saved or do we keep the sabbath uh because we are saved and so um the problem with the old covenant as we have discussed was the issue of salvation by works that is in the old testament but here you find that uh, the people were written for the laws in the stones and they would go and cram the laws. But now the new covenant is, impl is imploring us to actually, uh, for the laws to be part of us, for the laws to be in our hearts. And so uh, coming to church early is not an issue of, uh, I'm coming to church early because I want parking space. I'm coming to church early because I want to be seen by others, but I am coming to church because my heart has been transformed. And so, in the Old Testament, people could not keep uh, the laws because it was basically salvation by works. And if you read, maybe you can read, someone can read Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. It says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Yes, no one will have to tell his neighbor about me, nor will he need to help his brother know me. They will all know me, from the least to the greatest. I will forgive them for what they have done and will remember their sins no more. 
And so as Christians, we need a heart surgery. Mm. And why do we need a heart surgery? So that our hearts can be in sync with the law of God. Yes. Yeah, per perhaps if I could add, we find that in those, in the, in the, during the first covenant, the, the documents were written in stone. We find that even like the first one, Moses, when out of anger, he, he, he broke it. And they had to redo another one. So you find that it could be cut up because we, we remember they used to have uh, those tablets of stone and would have the scrolls which could be cut up or torn or burned. That you can find in Jeremiah chapter 36 and verse 23. But now this one is written in our hearts. And so this means that the Lord will write it in our minds, which means it will, it will stick. That's why you find that we are able to have memory verses because you read it and the Lord allows it to stick. And so it will be written in the organ of the memory of our understanding. And so, that just like our sister said, it, it allows you out of love to be obedient. It allows you to reflect Christ such that when I meet you, when I interact with you, I see Jesus living in you because of the love that you have for Jesus. Not because you are forced, but it is, those are just results of what, what has happened into you. And so God wanted Israel's faithfulness to be a grateful response. He wanted it to be a grateful response to what he had done for them. He, 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 it was not like something that was being forced. It was supposed to be gratitude, you appreciate. And that is why even we find ourselves here because we love what the Lord has done for us. We love the fact that Christ gave his life for each one of us so that we have a second chance. And um, as, I, as I finish, we find that God wanted Israel to obey his laws and as, as an acknowledgement that he wanted the best for them, a truth revealed in their great deliverance from Egypt. Their, obedien their obedience was to be an expression of gratitude, a manifestation of the reality of their relationship. So even us today, our gratitude, our obedience to God should be like we, we show appreciation of what the Lord has done for us. It becomes a reminder to us. Yeah. Yes, if I can just add again, Kidogo. Uh, we also realize that in the old covenant, you were to do something to be to move closer to Christ as in you are to perform a sacrifice to to be saved let me put it that way you are to perform a sacrifice to be saved you are to perform a sacrifice to be give, uh, forgiven your sins you are to perform a sacrifice to be accepted within the realms of the families of uh, the people of God but now in the new covenant it is not that you do good to get saved, but you do good because now you are already saved. Now, you only, all we need now to accept is that Jesus came and carried our burdens away. So that by just believing that, now you don't need to go through all that tedious process of sacrificing, slaughtering a goat or a whatever sheep to perfect yourself. We are already made perfect by only now accepting that that is true, Jesus' uh, blood came and uh, washed away our sins, we are made perfect. So we, we move every day to perfection because we are already done for something, not that so that we become perfect with Christ. And uh, I'd like to read a comment from uh, My Life Today, page 24. Uh, there's a line that says, the word a new heart also will I give you, mean a new mind will I give you, a change of heart is always attended by a clear conviction of Christian duty, an understanding of the truth. He who gives the scriptures close, prayerful attention he who gives the scriptures close prayerful attention will gain clear comprehension and sound judgment as if in turning to god he had reached a higher plane of intelligence and uh, beloved uh, in this new covenant we are told it's a journey that uh, starts basically with a step and while we walk, uh, there's this song that has, I always love. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. That even as we study the scriptures, even as we read the word of God, our hearts should be ready to receive him 
for his messages are sure and his promises are sure and they will always stand even through the test of time through the ages they never change and the lord of god never changes he has only given us a better way it does not mean now that christ has come we should abandon the law or let's say the 10 commandments and start living in the uh, in the name of ah christ had already died for us but the truth is we should they are to guide us and as they guide us we are to have a personal relationship with christ through opening up our minds in order to receive in order to learn in order to be transformed by the renewal of our hearts and uh oh helda i would like your comments on uh the father thought yes actually uh by moving into the new covenant does not mean that the old covenant was not good enough for us it was equally good enough for us and now it's only that it's now an improvement of of the old uh, of the old covenant so that now we are made more perfect with Christ so that now we don't need to do to be saved but we already saved that's why we are doing so that now we don't have to go through somebody like a priest or the priesthood to reach God or Jesus Christ. But now we can directly move and talk to Christ directly because now that, that, uh, that uh, barrier has been removed in the, in the new covenant. So that now we don't need to struggle so much to do good. But now we do good because... Christ himself has shown us, has already demonstrated it to us, that now this is the path we don't need to struggle. We don't need now to slaughter or to kill animals to be perfect. But now, by just believing and accepting that Jesus Christ is Lord, and now we are made perfect. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, our sister, maybe if you have a, a comment, uh, even as we bring this to a close. As we come to a close, what, what stands out is the fact that that when, when, uh, when the law is written in our hearts, our lives get shaped. We would not become obedient if we do not have the law of the Lord written in our hearts because it's a constant reminder. It's through it that we know that this is a path I should take and this is a path that I should not do what I should not take. And so obedience is a service and allegiance of love. And it, is a, is a, it shows true discipleship when we, when, we, when, we are, when we are obedient to what the Lord wants us to do. And so... The Lord says that if to, to show that we love him, we need to keep his commandments. And so obedi okay, the obedience towards uh, the commandments the Lord gave us shows the love that we have for him. And uh, all this is able through faith. Because it is only, through, it's only faith that makes us partakers of the grace of Christ, which enables us to render obedience. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And our sister, I don't know what would be your comment. I'll read something. Uh, with God's grace as shown uh, to us through the ministry of Jesus, we are given a better way to keep his law. So the righteousness of Christ must be the center of all we do or say. Anything else is self-righteousness and cannot be accepted by God, who has been called a God of love. So we either love him or we love ourselves. And uh, even as we conclude, uh, there's a line I would like to read that says, uh, that is in the last paragraph, it says, no deep-seated love for Jesus can dwell in the heart that does not realize its own sinfulness. That when there is the love for Christ, then we will accept that we are sinners and be ready to be transformed. That is after confessing our sins. We are then, therefore, to believe that Christ has done it and he can still do it again. He can do it for me. He can do it for you. And uh, uh, I'd like our elder to close with us as he, he, he punches the last line and uh, we'll offer a final prayer for us today. I just want to add that 
I want to read out something on, as we conclude that once the sinner allows God to create in him or her a new heart, he or she reflects God in every deed. The Holy Spirit empowers him or her to take love for God as his, as his principle. Herein, the new covenant promises is fulfilled. The new man lives in perfect obedience to God's will. That one we get from John, First John, chapter five, verse three, and then it continues to say is that the more we come close to Christ, the more we come to know our flaws. God's grace can transform us if we allow Christ in us. So that the more you move closer to Christ, the more you accept Christ, the more you will see yourself as sinful. There is a, a delusion sometimes that people, most of us as Christians, tend to think that the more you move to Christ is the more you, you look perfect. No. The more you move to Christ, closer to Christ is the more you will see yourself as sinful, as not even worthy standing before Christ, as not even worthy uh, mentioning his name. That, but if you, if you feel that now you feel that you are a perfect Christian, a uh, perfect uh, uh, Sabbath keeper, a perfect law keeper, then you are far away from Christ. But when you move closer to Christ, you will realize that you will see more of sin in you. You will realize that you are so unworthy. You will always want to repent, to ask God for more favors than when you are further away from him. Yes, yes. and uh, we find out that uh, salvation was by faith both in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament. And uh, Jesus as the mediator of the new covenant, because all the promises of God are always sure and they always stand, he gives us a better way. The new covenant just gives us a more direct connection to God himself through his son, Jesus Christ. And uh, I'd like to invite us all that may we find favor to connect with God even through his promises that are always sure and steadfast to stand the test of time and may the Lord bless us this day even as we carry on with the services of today. Elder, maybe you pray with us. There are no questions? If there are no any questions, then so, so no. uh, I'm not seeing any question. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, the Yes. You, you've seen some? There's a prayer request. There's a prayer request. Oh, yes, a prayer request. Mm. Maybe as we, look, as we go through, uh, just I can read through the comments. Oh. Um, Olivia Nduri says, The new covenant is a more direct way for us to be in touch with Christ. Correct. Uh, Jacinta Were says, uh, Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant because all the promises of God in him are yes and in him. Amen to the glory of God. Ogweno says uh, salvation was by faith, even in the Old Testament. I think that's not right. Um, uh, Gweno also says that it, uh, man's viewpoint is what has changed, but the object, that is the covenant, has not changed. Mm. Yes, um, so as you pray, Elder, uh, remember Faith Weke, who was an anti Paris Award, who has been admitted in the HDU since last week. Yes, I think that is from the, those are the comments that I'm seeing from uh, YouTube, unless there are others. Yes, you can go ahead and pray. Okay, very well. Uh, then we shall bow down our hearts for a word of prayer. Our gracious Father above, this Holy Sabbath day we come before you. Very humble, Father, to thank you for your protection, 
to thank you for your care, to thank you for your blessings, to thank you for the new covenant that thou you have given unto us through Jesus Christ. Father, even as we move on, in this Holy Sabbath day with the rest of the programs, we invite you to be with us. Thank you for your word that we've heard this morning. And thank you for the more that you prepared for us as we move along in the day. Father, as we bow down our heads here, we want to commit our sister War, who is not well. We commit her fully into your hands. And Father, you are the chief physician. And we humbly ask you to stretch your healing hands and touch her wherever she is. Father, we, 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 we ask you, Lord, to provide all the healings that she may need this day. And we shall thank you and honor your name at the end of this. Father, even for the rest of us who have been following us online, we commit each and every one of them into your every able hands. Father, may you bless them. May you provide for them. Meet them at the very point of their needs. Father, even those of us who are already in your church, physically, we commit all of them, each and every one, that you may meet them at the very point of their needs. Be with our children who are in the children's classes. Be with our youth. Father, the world is haywire. But we want to commit our youth into your hands. That, Father, as you transform us, as you build us anew, as you create in our hearts a new person, Father, may you do it together with all our siblings, our children, our parents, our brothers and sisters together. Father, be with us as we continue. And we pray for your blessings this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.